on from that one. Let's see Red Bar again, courtesy of No Jumper. No Jumper, sorry. No Final Kid subreddit. It says Red Bar discusses Bappa's recent accomplishments. Interesting to see what this is about, what Red Bar's saying. Interesting to see. I've seen a really, I'm not sure if you guys have clocked this on the fucking Final Kid subreddit, but there's been a, diff, there's been a very uh, noticeable change in mood around Red Bar on the No Jumper subreddit. No jumper. I keep saying the jumper. The final kids are it. Everyone has a bad thing to say about fucking Red Bar. They don't like him as much. What do you guys think in the chat? Are you guys still fans of Red Bar? Um, I feel like some people are kind of off him. Yeah, big up the Indian dude. Appreciate the five dollar super chat. Hey, not to detour from the topic, but have you looked at the new Man United prospect Van Garen Dish? He has penetrating passes. Hello, that Indian dude. I think that's a troll, that name of that player, so I'm not going to repeat it. But I haven't checked out <laughs> nothing regarding <laughs> United News signings, but I will check it out. But I think you're trying to get me there. You're trying to get me. You will not get me. Never. Never get me. You're never getting me with that shit. But I think that might be a troll. I think you're being cheeky there, sir. I think you're being cheeky, but I appreciate the $5 super chat. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys saying in the chat TVK sub always hated Red Bar okay cool people falling out oh, I love with Red Bar sometimes Red Bar is a bit too much Red Bar sits down when he pees <laughs> okay I love Red Bar says Hot Wheels KNG um what's what what is saying uh uh, I can't get with Red Bar. He's always been absolutely insufferable to me. He's just a talentless rambling wannabe comedian hater I don't get it yeah that's the funny thing I remember there's a clip, right, with, um, I wish I could get it, actually. There's a clip of, I think his name is David Cross. He's a comedian. Is it David Cross? Let's see if I can quickly Google my phone. David Cross. Yes, yeah, David Cross. So there's a there's an episode of David Cross on a podcast called How Long Gone that I listen to. The podcast isn't to do with comedy. It's mostly like a culture type of podcast, similar to stuff that I talk about on my podcast, The Agassino Zinger Show, available on all platforms. Go and check it out. And they had him on once, right? And one of the hosts of How Long Gone, um, his name is TJ, and he's, he's kind of the funny one, right? He's like always the one with the one-liners and shit. And he got talking to David Cross about how he hates stand-up, and he went to a Rogan show and didn't enjoy it, and blah, 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 blah. And... I guess somehow within that conversation, David Cross was able to surmise, which I didn't know at the time because I listened to the show all the time, but I didn't even know. David Cross was able to work out that this guy, J TJ, in that show was a kind of a failed comic. Essentially, he never made it. And maybe part of his resentment towards stand-ups is that he never made it, but then he feels like the people that did make it weren't talented. So he kind of had that weird bitterness resentment thing. So it must be something that other comedians can notice or people that are really plugged into the comedy world. Like, I don't think I'm as plugged in as I probably should be. Um, I don't watch enough specials and shit, but I think a lot of people can see that. You can kind of see it in people. So maybe some people notice that about Red Bar, that maybe he's a failed comic in some regard and he kind of has always had this bit of bitterness that he never made it, um, despite him thinking he's amazing or whatnot. I don't really know um, because I know some of the law about Red Bar is that he had his own comedy club, I think, to begin with because uh, I don't really mind his commentary. He's obviously a little bit excessive and a little bit crazy and he goes really hard on some people, but I think that's necessary. I think, you know, in each space of entertainment, there's always going to be a Red Bar S figure. I think in hip hop, they've got somebody like that. I think he's called, his name is Star. He's kind of a similar type of vibe of a Red Bar. He's going to say the things that no one wants to say. Even like a Corey Holcomb is a good example in that hip hop black space. There's always going to be somebody who's going to push the line and say the things that you're not meant to say or have the uncomfortable conversations or call people out on their bullshit and not be afraid of ruffling feathers. And he doesn't want to make friends. I think that kind of helps him in that regard because he never, you know, he does doesn't want to be a part of the LA Glitterati, clearly. He might have some resentment because he didn't make it, and he's not a millionaire driving a purple Porsche at Brendan, but, you know, purple Porsches are nice. So when you see Brendan doing his fucking stick on, on stage and he's fucking terrible, it kind of, you're, you're within your right to kind of feel a little bit of grief that you don't also have one. So I kind of understand where he's coming from in that regard, but I don't mind Red Bar, personally. I don't really mind him, personally, to be completely honest. Um, he has a, you know, he, he has a, his appeal. Um, he definitely does his own thing. The show's super quality. It's filmed amazing. Um, really great lighting, camera work. Everything about it is really good. And I think, to be honest, he's a bit of a... 
you know, he's a he kind of he's a bit of a trendsetter in the how he kind of the, you know lays out his fucking set and how he does it. You see a lot of people doing the same sort of thing with the screens and the fucking soundboard and whatever the rants and all that stuff. You know, like I'm a, I'm a fan of his. I don't mind him to be fair. Okay, so there's Eric Griffin. We'll keep him down there for now. There's Brendan Schaub, new baby on the way. Canceled that entire European tour. I mean, he really thought that was going to be. I mean, do you know how like crazy that is? Actually, hold on, hold on. Excuse me, Eddie D. What? Red Bar said Eric Griffin's wife works at Target. <laughs> what? Is that true? How does he find this shit out, man? I swear to God, this guy is savage. I still remember when he fucking did that stream where he found out that Andrew Santino um, had like a side piece or something. Is it Andrew Santino? Yeah, big Andrew Santino. Yay, we're big up Andy for $10 temperature. Big up you. Has Rogan ever talked about being a comedy club owner? That's fascinating to me. We always hear from artists, but rarely do we hear the executive side from studios, clubs. Yeah, I think he did. Big up Andy Do. Thank you for the um, uh, $10 super chat, my friend. I think he did. Um, there's one particular one that he did where he spoke about, I think, when it first opened. So if you go back in the archives or you try and remember when the club opened, there are some shows where he kind of speaks about the club opening. He doesn't speak about it too much business-wise. I think he doesn't want people to know about the business because Joe Rogan's kind of easy to read. When he doesn't speak about some things, it's because he doesn't want people asking questions. So he kind of avoids bringing it up because, you know, he doesn't want people to kind of dig a bit deeper in it. Um, but yeah, um, going back to Red Bar, somehow he found out that Andrew Santino had a side piece. Now, if you know anything about Andrew Santino, you know he's, he's pretty private. I don't even know what his wife looks like, right? But he has a wife, right? But he kind of keeps that to himself. So the fact that Red Bull was able to find out that he has a fucking side piece was insane. And he kind of went in a bit on it a little bit, like a bit crazy. I was like, whoa, this guy is on another level. So him finding out that Eric Griffin's wife works at Target <clears throat> is fucking hilarious. She said it on Facebook Live. Yeah, no, I don't care if she's working at Target at all, Natashki. I'm just saying, the stuff that he does and says, most men wouldn't do that because you know there's always a threat of violence. Red Bar doesn't give a fuck because he doesn't go outside. He's similar to academics in that regard. He doesn't go outside, and he also lives in the place where no lot of comedians, you know, within that LA space go to. He lives in somewhere in Chicago, I heard, right? Um, he kind of minds his business, so he kind of avoids all those issues. But it just surprised me when he says that kind of stuff because in my head, I know if that was me, and he was talking about somebody that I love like that and I lived anywhere near, I'd be on his, I mean, I'd be fucking going crazy. Like, so the fact that he does this to these guys and he does it so consistently so often and he could get something under their skin is crazy. I'm still to this day don't want to acknowledge the fact that he might have run my guy Joe Diaz off of fucking podcasting. I don't want to acknowledge it. I know the truth is probably he did and he played a big role in it, but I'm still trying to believe that Joey Diaz just got tired of podcasting and he's an older dude now. He's got a book deal and he's got a family. He doesn't want to do it anymore. But the reality is if I put, if I kind of put the pieces together and I trace back the beef that Red Bar was having with, or the beef that Joey Diaz had with Red Bar because Red Bar exposed that Joey Diaz was, was had some Xanax addiction before anybody knew about it and all that stuff and it spiraled out of control and then Red Bar going to beef with Sam Tripoli and then Joey Diaz went off for him about that and said he's going to kill him and shit then delete that episode. I'm sure Red Red Bar ran Joey Diaz off of podcasting, but I don't want to. I don't want to acknowledge it because I love Joey so much. Do you know what I mean he's my guy? I fucking love the guy, so I don't want to acknowledge it. I don't acknowledge fucking Red Bar's power. But the fact that he found out Eric Griffin's wife works at Target is fucking insane. <laughs> Honestly, man, fucking insane. No wonder Eric Griffin does the Golden Hour now. No wonder he's on the Golden Hour. You know, subjecting himself to fucking Brendan Schaub's intellect, um, Chris D'Elia, you know, being a shadow of informer self. No wonder. No wonder, bro. No wonder. God almighty. Because if I'm not mistaken, Eric Griffin's streams kind of dipped a bit in it because he had a bit of a pop during the pandemic where he started to get a lot of traction on Twitch and stuff. But he's so dour and negative and bitter and a hater that I think over time, it's kind of hard to keep watching him on stream and stuff. He can, he probably type of person that probably banned you from chat if you ask the wrong questions and shit. He's kind of a bit weird. So it makes sense why they're trying to cover their bases and they're probably getting married soon as well. So in it, do what you have to do to kind of keep the lights on. But it's just fucking hilarious, man. It's fucking hilarious. So I saw a clip from him the other day that one of these uh, 
Brendan Hader channels posted. It was incredible. Every day there's a new documentary about Hader. Hey! And they're getting good. You know, because everybody's already told the initial story. I think that's what I hated hearing so much, that initial tale. Gringo poppy, gringo poppy over and over. But now everybody's doing up-to-date, day-by-day, minute-by-minute <laughs> Shab news. That's Pretty more. exciting. Now it's a nice watch. You type in Brendan Shab every day. There's 16 documentaries <laughs> of, of various little things that he's up to. And he's up to a lot. So I understand. But we're, this doesn't usually happen. Usually when we all collectively hate somebody and wish for their demise. No, I don't. I don't know. Nope, 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 nope. Natasha, I don't believe that. You're wrong. It's not that Brendan can't grow that beard. I honestly think Brendan thinks that beard he's got looks good. That's why you're wrong. I honestly think Brendan thinks that that trim thing he's got where it's got the gap and the things are wonky, he thinks that looks good. I'm sure of it. I'm almost sure of it. I'm almost sure that Brendan thinks that looks good. Because even if you don't even if you don't have a connecting, you can still, you know, cut it in a way where it kinda of looks like it's connect and over time it can kind of grow into itself and whatnot. But he actually prefers to have his beard like that. That's a scary thing. Come on, play. There it doesn't really pan out that way, but in Brendan's case, it's starting to actually fizzle out to the to where he can't put on the facade anymore. It must be getting really scary. There was a video I just watched, and Brian goes, yeah, I heard you canceled your tour. And he goes, yep, just going to chill with the kiddos this summer. So he's doing nothing. It's all been canceled. He's just chilling. This is what they say. This is the line. Chilling with the kiddos this summer. He had to say that he won't address why the tour was actually canceled. Obviously, they tracked it. How could it. he? They tracked it every day. He sold no tickets. He thought he was going to go do a 50-city tour. In to be fair, it's kind of worked though. Credit to Brendan, it has kind of worked. Everyone's kind of forgot about it and moved on. It's quite a good strategy. I thought it was dumb in the first place. Obviously, selfishly, because I wanted him to react to it so that I could react to it and make a clip about it. But if you're looking at it from the point of view of Brendan Shaw, it actually was smarter to be like, you know what? I'm going to go mute on this shit. No more. Shh. I'm not going to speak about it. I'm going to pretend like it never happened and just keep it keeping on. Because what can he actually say? Nothing really. It's gonna so it's gonna satisfy anybody's appetite, right? Um, he's not gonna make it make sense because it's clearly super embarrassing that he went out and booked all these big venues and you couldn't sell, you know, even half of the tickets to kind of make it make sense for the for the venue themselves, and they probably pulled the plug because that's what I think happened. I think most likely the venues decided, hey, we can't have you come over and do these shows because we're gonna be running at a loss. The, the fees to pay for the security guards are more than the tickets that you've sold. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. And that's even more embarrassing because it clearly is an L on your regard that they have to pull the show. So that's embarrassing. So clearly he can't explain it. So best thing to do, so he did, it, he did it well. That's what Rogan does. Rogan does that expertly. When Rogan has wanted to address something, he just never speaks about it. And then people stop talking about it and then we move on. Like the whole Brian Callen thing. Brian Callen gets accused of rape. He's one of his best friends. He's always on Rogan. You know, he's always on there. He's probably got the second most highest guest appearances on there. Maybe second to only Brendan. It happens. Rogan pretends like it never happened. He just never mentions Brian's name. He never speaks about it. And then over time, people stop talking about it and it kind of moves on. That's actually a good tactic if you want to actually move away things. It's obviously hard because you're going to keep seeing people, you know, trolling you in the comments and stuff. You have to avoid that. But if you can kind of get over the two-week hounding online, just ignoring it actually works. Sell out those seats, and that's how he was going to provide for me. He says, well, everyone on the internet hates Chris D'Elia, but he does these 5,000 seaters every weekend, so he gets a lot of money. That's what I'm going to do. I'm Brendan. And it didn't work out. And I don't think it's going to go back. I think he's had his peak as far as how many people have been introduced to him. And now it's just going down, down, down to the point where, yeah, nobody's even tuning into these shows he has anymore. So they're making no ad money there. Where is he getting his money from? Where is Eric Griffin getting his money from? Okay. The money thing I'm interested I, The money thing, I don't like to pocket watch people because I think it's lame. But the money thing is something interesting to kind of speak about a little bit. Because I think there's two things happening here. I think either there is a silent benefactor, a benefactor or Patreon or something in the background who's 
basically funding T Fat K or Thick Boy, right? Or most likely, people really underestimate how much money podcasts make, especially ones that have been endorsed by Rogan, right? The whole Rogan effect of being able to be on that show, have people follow you, get 50,000 views minimum on each video, clips always doing great. You've got, you know, got a good comedy career where you can play most clubs. That actually adds up, sponsors, all that stuff. So I think people un either underestimate how much these guys make or there's somebody in the background, you know, propping the business up. Or maybe both. Maybe there's both. I think that's basically what's happening here, a little bit. Because for some reason, I think people, because they dislike Brendan so much, they can't... Hey, big up the India dude. Thank you for $5, my friend. Good luck on your fitness goals, BTW. For me, dieting is the hardest part. I can get the workout in, but I love my food too much. Yeah, big up. Thank you, brother. Thank you for the motivation, yeah, or the encouragement. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, the food part is always the hardest. It, it, it's kind of a common thing people say. You actually lose weight in the kitchen. You don't lose weight in the gym. Um, but it's actually the hardest thing to do. Because I think most people, if they went to, you could lose weight, you know, for a long period of time, like a couple of years, by just, you know, watching your calories and whatnot and fasting and whatnot if you wanted to. But it's the hardest thing to do, which is why you kind of speed it up with the burning of the fat. So that's obviously good. But... um. Yeah, big up you. Thank you for the five dollars. I appreciate you, mate. I was going to say, yeah. So I think because people dislike Brendan so much, they can't wrap their heads around him making any money. Because if he makes money, that means that some people watch and like what he does, which they do. Because you know, content is subjective. What I like and what you like is completely different. And you know, there's no better or you know, there's no good or bad. It just is what it is. So I think in the case of Brendan, maybe what's going on here is that people aren't really realizing how much money the shows make. Because even during a downturn, like it's kind of like, you know, T Fat K and Fit Boy are sort of like going down, you know, they're on a bit of a law at the moment. They'll still be able to keep the lights on. No one's been fired, doesn't need to be fired. Um, they've got, got a lean operation now. They haven't swapped studios, they're not downsizing studios. Brendan hasn't sold his Ferrari. Um, you know, they still live in a big house. The kids still go to private school. Their lifestyle is still the same. So clearly, clearly, um, the business is still booming, even though it maybe isn't as good as it once was. So I think they make a lot more money than people actually think they do. That's the thing. Um, I, I think actually comedians do a good job of pretending like they don't make money. They LARP a lot as working class, which I think helps them to be fair with their career, where they LARP as working class or middle class. But I think there's some of those guys who don't, isn't it, right? Like, um, what's his name? Like Burt Kreischer and Tom Segura. They clearly like to lean into the fact that they have money. But a lot of comedians like to pretend that they don't because it makes you more relatable to your audience. But don't get it confused. These guys have money, like for sure. Um, so I think that's Brendan's thing. Eric Griffin's thing, I think it makes sense. He does a lot. He does enough shows as a comedian, as a streamer to make money to look after himself. You know, if his wife is working also, double the income in the household, they're perfectly fine. So I don't think there's any problems there. I think that Brendan thing, people just underestimate how much money his podcasts make, especially when you think of the Patreon on Golden Hour, Golden Hour YouTube channel itself, the Fire of the Kid, the clips, his comedy gigs, things that he does all the time, the merch sales, it all adds up. Sponsors. Chris D'Elia, we know, has his tour. That's the only thing that's saving Chris right now. The tour and the merch. You know, all the Matt Reif style lunatics that allow him to do this and support him. But Brenda doesn't have those people. Eric Griffin doesn't have those people. Let's get a little glimpse of them and then we'll show you what, what happened here. Nothing can stop us. I don't know. I don't know about that. Eric, you're next. I wonder how the uh, what's it saying it? Say my card. They all hate each other too. I don't buy that also. I don't buy I don't think they hate each other. I just think they hate the position they're in. I think they all hate the fact that they have to rely on Brendan. <laughs> that's basically what happens there. And I think Brendan even hates the fact that he has to rely on himself. I think that's the issue. Um, he can't just be on autopilot just like letting people do, you know, like with Fear of Vaughn. Like you just turn on the cameras with fucking, you know, on King and the Sting and that stuff was getting views and it was going up. I think they all kind of pissed off because this show is basically 
a reflection of where they all are in their careers. Because I think if Chris didn't get exposed as a pedo, he's never doing the golden hour. He's never even doing that much content with Brendan specifically. I don't think so. Look back to how it was beforehand. It would always be content with like Chris, with Brendan and Brian, but not a lot of Chris and Brendan content itself. It was when he got cancelled and he had no other friends. Brendan kind of slipped in and went to be his best friend, right? To kind of replace the fear of Von Raw. Um, Eric Griffin, the same thing. He wouldn't have been friends with these guys if they didn't have you know, no other people to kind of call on because Tom Segura, Burt Crash, all those guys aren't going to be hanging around these guys as often as they were in the past. So that's the issue. So that's what the energy you get from it. I don't think they hate each other. I just think they all individually hate the fact that they have to rely on that show because it kind of is re re representative of where their careers are. What's up, bro? You keep looking at me today, man. There's the show. You're a handsome guy, man. Thanks, dog. You know what it is? You got grays and it's looking, it doesn't look bad on you, man. Ah, a little uh, salt and pepper. A little dusty. Everyone has a little dust here. Yeah, yeah. You guys more on your face. I mean, the show goes nowhere. I mean, it's really bad. We watch it all the time, hoping to find something to play on the show. There's never anything even to make fun of. It's that boring. It's that boring. I mean, neither of them try. They barely get through the hour. You could tell none of them are entertained by each other. Maybe Eric Griffin. Eric Griffin, he, like, forgets. Eric Griffin can't pick up on... No, Eric Griffin's happy he's there. That's what energy you're getting. Eric Griffin's happy he's there because he was fighting for ages to be friends with everybody. Remember, like, he, you know, the original story is that he, and, him and Bobby Lee were meant to do Bad Friends or that kind of podcast. But Bobby Lee kind of, you know, left him on red and essentially went and did the show with Andrew Santino instead because then it kind of came out through their back and forths that, you know, Eric Griffin's a little bit of a negative Nancy and isn't the greatest person to hang out with all the time. So Bobby Lee didn't really like the idea or the prospect of trying to do a show with him themselves, even though they were really good friends. By that time, Eric Griffin thought they were better friends than what they were. So he's always kind of been a little bit on his own with no real crew. Um, even though he was been on Rogan in the past, Rogan's not really a big friend of his. He never really had a click. So he's always kind of trying to find a little group to kind of hang out with. And he's been trying to get in with these guys for a long time. And now they've, you know, they kind of welcomed him in because they've got no other option. So he's really happy to be there. That's the energy that you get. The Chris Lear energy is obvious. Chris Lear, before he got cancelled, let's remember, he was on the cusp of becoming a quote-unquote movie star. He was posting videos of himself training in his fucking garage gym, working out a bunch, looking really, really buff, clearly kind of putting the work in. He was going to star in that fucking zombie movie that Tig Notaro replaced him in. And most likely he had other things in the works. He's probably not going to mention it because he doesn't want to cry. But he probably had other roles that were in the works. If that movie would have done well and he would have added to the box office, he would have ended up doing other shows also. Um, other movies that put probably, probably in line, maybe TV series. And then it all went... Pew! the moment that first girl came out and alleged what she alleged about him so that's the energy that you get from the golden hour it's them just realizing in real time that their careers have kind of stagnated and they're probably never going to get back to the place that they once were that's the energy that you see from these people in 